Dr. Bowen back here with you for another session of Microbiology Boot Camp. Our topic today is going to be Clostridium difficile, a very pesky bacteria that can give you some really big problems on the wards. And I say on the wards because this is associated with antibiotics, but more particularly the really hardcore antibiotics are going to give you this problem. So most of the time those patients are in the hospital. Another reason you see it in the hospital is that this can spread from person to person. And so this just highlights the importance of not only keeping patients who have confirmed C. diff isolated, but also washing your hands. Washing your hands, very important. Okay, if you haven't had the opportunity yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. I have the link here. You can also click below in the description of the video or on the I button in the upper right hand corner. If you consider chipping in a dollar a month, a little bit goes a long way to help keep these videos free and coming. Otherwise, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel or uh, patronize my advertisers. All of that really helps. So thank you very much in advance. All right, I'm not going to go through this again, but I show it to you every time because it's uh, I can't highlight enough the importance of knowing the difference between gram positive and gram negative. So I did a video on the overview of gram positive bacteria where I go into this in greater detail. All of this is very highly testable for step one, so I recommend going back and watching that if you haven't. This is the gram stain procedure. You should be familiar with this and why gram positive stain purple and gram negative stain reddish pink. So we're going to go into the classification of C. diff, how we get there through our algorithm, uh, some of the characteristics. There are really just two that you need to know, the two toxins, fairly simple. Uh, we'll talk about the disease, the C. diff colitis, and then some of the complications. Now for step one, you really need to know the toxins, how they work, and the disease and the treatment. For step two and three, you'll want to know the disease, the treatment, and the complications and management. Okay? And then we'll finish up with the story. I try my best. Okay, so here's our algorithm here. We're still talking about gram-positive bacilli. This is Clostridium species, although C. diff is often called Clostridioides difficile, so you may hear that uh, thrown around. These are all gram-positive spore-forming rods. They're all obligate anaerobes. After this, we'll move on to the gram-positive aerobic bacilli, Listeria bacillus and Corinobacterium, the cause of diphtheria. Uh, so this is the fourth and final of our Clostridium species. Here we are right here. All Clostridium are gram-positive bacilli, they're all obligate anaerobes, and they're all spore-forming. So same song and dance as we've gone through all of the Clostridium species. Now I just want to draw your attention here, if you're looking under the microscope, you may see these what look like little bubbles uh, inside these gram-positive rods. I want you to know that that's the spore. That's not the shape of the bacteria, that's the spore. And you can see the little spores coming out here. That's a spore. That's not the shape of the bacteria. Now, when you see this, this spore, it can often make it look like a club, but this is not a club-shaped bacteria. Remember that the club-shaped bacteria is Corinobacterium, which we'll talk about later. So know that these are rods. These are not club-shaped. Club-shaped, you should remember, is Corinobacterium, which is the cause of diphtheria. Some characteristics. We've got two toxins, toxin A and toxin B. Toxin A is the enterotoxin. All you need to know is that it binds the brush border of the intestine, it alters fluid secretion, and that causes diarrhea. If you know that, you're good to go. Toxin B is a little bit more complicated. It gets into the cell, it depolymerizes actin, and results in cell death. And when you have cell death, it's going to form a, a membrane in the, the colon. And that's a pseudomembrane. So we call it a pseudomembrane, and that is going to reduce the ability of the colon to absorb water, and that also results in diarrhea. So both of these contribute to diarrhea. The disease caused by C. difficile is called pseudomembranous colitis. You'll also hear C. diff colitis. 
Uh, I want you to first know that this is not the same as antibiotic-associated diarrhea. Antibiotic-associated diarrhea is not necessarily C. diff diarrhea. Antibiotic-associated diarrhea is basically where you take an antibiotic, it alters the flora of the intestine and leads to a, back, or leads to a diarrhea. Now, C. diff colitis is an antibiotic-associated diarrhea, but not all antibiotic-associated diarrheas form these pseudomembranes. So this is just one flavor of antibiotic-associated diarrhea. But if you hear antibiotic-associated diarrhea, do not assume it's pseudomembranous colitis. That's a big mistake that a lot of people make. The history is always going to include an antecedent, antecedent antibiotic use. Say that three times fast. And in particular, you're going to see clindamycin and fluoroquinolones very strongly associated with C. diff. Also, proton pump inhibitor use is a big risk factor for C. diff. So if you have the two of those together, to, it can cause some major problems. And that's just because it alters the acidity of the, the, uh, what's inside the stomach and ultimately gets to the intestine and makes it more favorable for C. diff proliferation. The symptoms are crampy abdominal pain, very foul-smelling diarrhea, more foul-smelling than usual. Nurses are really good at being able to tell the difference between normal-smelling poop and foul-smelling poop. To me, it all smells bad, but nurses are really good at that. So ask your nurses because they've got, they've got a sixth sense for this. Uh, you'll also commonly see fever with this. So... Diarrhea and fever are not common together. A lot of times with like your, your just run-of-the-mill diarrhea, maybe from, from uh, IBS or IBD, or diarrhea associated with food poisoning, you're not going to see a fever. So a fever in conjunction with bacteria plus a history of antibiotic use is really a giveaway for C. diff. The diagnosis for boards, it's going to be the stool toxin assay. So you look for the toxin in the stool. There are other ways to diagnose this, but for boards, it's going to be the toxin assay. If you've gotten a CBC on the patient, which you may do anyway, if they've got fever, you would see elevated white count. And then also, if you're checking the stool for whatever reason, you will see a positive stool guaiac indicating that there are blood cells in the stool and then a positive lactoferrin, which is a surrogate marker for white blood cells in the stool. The treatment is going to be to stop the antibiotic that was formerly being used that caused the disease in the first place, and then to start oral antibiotics. And it's very important that you use oral antibiotics because that's going to get into the intestine and kill the bacteria. The treatment of choice is vancomycin or phydaxomycin. Either of those are fine, but vancomycin is what's most likely going to be the right answer on the exam. Historically, we've used oral metronidazole, but it's becoming more clear that vancomycin is preferable to metronidazole. But any of these three would be right answers on the test. They will not ask you to choose between these three. And then very important, when you have a patient with C. diff, you need to isolate them and you need to be wearing your, your apron and everything and throw it away when you leave. Make sure you're washing your hands with soap and water, not that alcohol foam that you commonly use when you're going in and out of the rooms. You need to use soap and water because alcohol does not kill the spores of C. diff. And you can spread it from patient to patient and you can wind up with a little epidemic on your wards. Don't do that. Complications from C. diff include toxic megacolon, which can lead to perforation, and ultimately peritonitis and shock, and that can be really bad. If you suspect this, which you should if the patient's got sudden worsening of abdominal pain, bloating, you should initiate systemic antibiotics. You're going to continue your vancomycin. You'll add IV metronidazole to, to, to kill off any bacteria that are causing septicemia to prevent it in the first place. And then you'll want to get a CT to diagnose toxic megacolon if it's there, and then a surgery consult. This is important for step two and three. If you're taking step one, you don't really need to know this. This is what toxic megacolon looks like on CT. Uh, you should know what toxin mega, toxic megacolon looks like on CT if you're taking step one just for your GI pathology. 
Uh, this is what it looks like. This is the transverse colon here, obviously very dilated. This is going to give a patient some major bloating. So our story takes place at the Clover Fleece Farm. And I chose that name because it kind of sounds like Clostridium difficile. Maybe kind of, well, close enough. Okay, so we have our two sheep, sheep A and sheep B, and they are dining on some nuts. I don't know, I don't think sheep eat nuts, but they're eating it here. So nuts is our symbol for spore-forming bacteria. We see the nuts in all of our talks on spore-forming bacteria. And here comes Fleecer A. He's going to get the fleece from the sheep, and he is next to the entrance to the barn, and so is sheep A. And they're next to the entrance because toxin A is enterotoxin. Toxin A and enterotoxin, same thing. And he's got a brush because toxin A binds to the brush border, altering fluid secretion, resulting in diarrhea. And here comes our friend, the purple snake with a mask. And a purple snake with a mask is a reminder that C. diff is a gram-positive anaerobic rod, as are all the Clostridium species. And when it saw the snake, the sheep got scared and had diarrhea. And that is because toxin A causes diarrhea. Now here comes our other fleecer. And she is uh, next to the cyclone because toxin B, sheep B, is cytotoxic, or cytotoxin. I don't know why they're fleecing sheep when there's a tornado, but here you go. So toxin B is cytotoxin, and that acts by inhibiting the polymerization of actin, and that's why she has this actin rod right here. She carries an actin rod to fleece the sheep. And so toxin B inhibits actin polymerization, resulting in cell death and pseudomembrane formation, which also contributes to the diarrhea. She's also got an antibiotic bottle, and that's because C. diff colitis is induced by antibiotics, as well as proton pump inhibitors, especially when used with an antibiotic. Notice the well here. That's to remind you to wash your hands with water and soap not with alcohol foam. So hand washing reduces the transmission of C. difficile. And we're not escaping the consequences of that cyclone. It just blew up a van and a metro. And that's to remind you that you treat C. diff colitis with vancomycin or metronidazole oral. Remember, vancomycin is preferred. You can also use Phydoxamycin is another uh, possible antibiotic to use.